r slash ask reddit parents of killers what's your story godfather of one my son is his best friend pretty fucked up thing and i'm pretty sure they're both shell shocked to this day my godson moved to a farm with his new wife he quit his job and went on to breed shrimps on tanks things went south when some people invaded his farm not so rare in my country he managed to scare them off with the help of the police but one invader guy kept coming back one day I got a call from my son saying he was going to the farm, 4 hours away, that something bad happened. I was caught up in the job, told him I would only get there very late, arrived at the farm about 12 hours after he did. The invader guy came back earlier that day with a knife and kicked down the kitchen door. My godson had killed him with 5 shots to the chest. He panicked and called my son, which in turn panicked some more, and decided it wasn't a good idea to get messed up with the law. The both of them decided the best way to go was to hide the body, but not before chopping it up first. I got to the house to find my son and godson dead silent, with dry blood under their nails and all over their clothing, and the kitchen floor still smeared with blood and remains. I cleaned it all up, washed their hands, and sent them to the shower. It's been two years now, and they were never the same. My godson moved to Portugal with the wife to shake up his life. My son now goes to a psychologist and a neurologist, but refuses to talk to me about it. Sometimes I have nightmares about it, and it wasn't me to quarter a dead body. My husband's grandpa and grandma killed his grandpa's mom. It was the late 1940s, and the three of them were planning to travel to another city for reasons unknown. The mom refused to chip in for gas, so they wouldn't let her ride in the cab of the truck. She rode in the box of the truck in minus 30 winter weather, and when they stopped for a break, she had froze to death. They hid the body in the random town they had stopped at for a break, and continued on their trip. They picked her body up on the way back to the farm. To this day, grandma insists her mother-in-law should help pay for gas. Edit. Wow. I thought this story would get buried. I asked my husband some details to answer a few questions on this. They were going to a livestock market, and she was in the box of the truck with some sheep. Minus 30c by the way. At that time, on the farm, if someone died you just called the town doctor and they came and wrote a death certificate. No reporting went to police, and it wasn't considered suspicious. She's buried in the family cemetery also. We realize this is totally fucked up. We only found out recently, because we don't have much contact with that side of the family. What the actual flip? Dang, that's pretty cold. My uncle raped and murdered his disabled daughter and tried to frame someone else so he could collect insurance money. He got away with it for almost 20 years. One day, I get a phone call from my dad saying that we should expect the family name in the news and why. My adopted sister got into a car wreck this weekend while off her medication this weekend. She takes it so that her epilepsy is well managed. We don't know. Why she didn't take the meds, but she seized her grandma and stuck a mother and her two kids on a sidewalk or crosswalk. The two kids were crushed to death, and the mother is still in the ICU. My sister is also in the hospital and we don't know if she will go to prison for the accident. XVMK of 1. 7 years together, he started doing meth without me knowing. 5 years and 2 kids in. Tried to get him help, when I found out, left him because he refused it. They caught him in his victim's car, he confessed 12 days into his trial, got life plus 10, said he wanted to know how it felt to kill someone. I'm raising our two kids, they don't know yet, don't plan on telling them, until they're old enough, kills me that they will have to live with a burden like that. It's massively unfair, they certainly don't deserve it, and neither did the victim or his family. Off the meth. He was the type of person that would help the homeless, generous, outgoing, excessively intelligent and ambitious. How heavy drugs can change people into monsters. When I was 10 or 11, my younger brother and I were visiting our grandparents. Hanging out in the hotel, we were told that our mother had passed and our dad was going to jail. It took a while to realize what happened. I got the full story when I was 15. Dad was sleeping. Mom tried to suffocate him with a pillow, he ended up switching it around onto her, resulting in her death. According to newspaper articles, he hid her body in the woods, and according to the police, they would not have found the body unless my dad told them. He was sentenced to like 15 years in prison. 
he got out of prison 5 years ago or so, gets caught up in the pharmaceutical drugs, which led to harder things and ends up getting some heroin with fentanyl laced in it, and dots. I turned out okay. I have a hard time expressing feelings in my relationship, but my fiance loves me and works with me. I work at a restaurant and a father of a killer is one of our regulars. It's a fancy restaurant, dude is super rich. He and his wife live separate lives, and he goes through a lot of girlfriends, always 20 plus years younger than him. He pays for their condos and plastic surgery. He got one of them a gold necklace that read gold digger, and had her wear it in public. Not a lot of our respect for women, that guy. Loud smarmy older businessman type. Anyway his son is the guy who killed his girlfriend in LA and drained all her blood. I don't know how the dad feels about it inside but like, outwardly, no change. Zero change in lifestyle or persona slash mannerisms. I'm just an outsider obviously, but you wouldn't even know it happened when it happened. You're talking about Lorne Liebel and his son Blake. They were just ordered to pay 41 million to the family. Not me but my mother was in a relationship with a serial killer slash pedophile. In the early to mid 80s my mom started dating this guy. She already had my older sister with another man. New boyfriend was a doting stepdad. They lived in Las Vegas. My mom ran Kina. And he was a card counter. She helped disguise him because he was blacklisted from most casinos for the aforementioned card counting. I came along. They continued to be the happy little super dysfunctional family until the FBI grabs my mom from work and interrogates her for hours about it. He's a rapist slash pedophile slash murder. My mom didn't know. She dabbled in low level criminality, but not that stuff. Splits town with us kids. Gets back with older sister's dad. I grow up not knowing this until I'm 14 and my parents divorce and dad asks for a DNA test for me and I'm floored. Your dad isn't your dad it's actually this evil man who's on death row. My mom's a huge drunk and drug addict she can't even speak to me about this without a full fledged mental breakdown. So everything I know is spotty. She passed away 4 years ago. I'm going through her stuff and find some letters from the history channel contacting her to participate in a documentary about him. One thing that chills me to my core. He used to call her his first victim's name during sex. He swore she never knew. Until after the fact and I believe her. Now see this is the sort of weird shit that keeps me coming back to this old here internet. Nothing puts into perspective just how easy your life is than reading through someone else's. My stepson killed one of his bullies in high school. He has a cleft palate, and it's a pretty bad one. All his life he's been bullied for it. His mother and I have done everything we could to stop the bullying but it never ceased. We contacted administrators, moved, switched schools, tried everything. Eventually, we decided on an online homeschooling program. Unfortunately, one of his bullies from his last school knew where we lived. He'd come by and taunt my stepson regularly. My wife and I were never around because the kid would come while we were working. One day, after my son tried ignoring his previous taunting, the bully figured it must have been a good idea to break in and find him. He threw a brick through our back window, which was in the guest bedroom and proceeded to attempt to enter. Now, I partially blamed myself for what happened next. My son never knew his real father, and so since I've come in, I've done everything in my power to fill him, and we grew pretty close. I ended up trusting him enough to tell him where I kept my gun. Seeing as how his mother and I worked so often, I wanted him to be able to protect himself if anything were to happen, if we were gone. So, he grabs my gun, opens the door to where the bully was, and shot him in the chest twice. He died before the ambulance reached the scene. My son was never charged for anything, as there was obvious evidence of a forced entry, and the neighbors claim that the bully repeatedly said he was gonna kill my son when he got inside. This happened almost 10 years ago, when my son was 15. He's been to so many different psychologists and therapists since then. Something in him changed that day, like he blamed himself. For years he tried to isolate himself from the world. He became a heavy alcoholic, and even attempted suicide. He blames himself for taking another human's life, even though he knows his was in danger. Seeing what happened to my boy, it's heartbreaking. I sold the gun, never got another one. To this day, he still has that look of grief and guilt in his eyes. I'm starting to believe no amount of tears will ever wash it away. 
Edit. Thank you all so much for the support and condolences. It's such a hard thing for me to tell this story, and so many people speaking up for my family brings tears to my eyes. I can't put into words how much this really means to me. Thank you, all of you.